I think that was the important thing about this exhibition here, that it gives us a new uh, uh, understanding of Kerk and Gutmann work. And, uh, and also that we now, for the first time, um, the, two, the two or maybe three different types of uh, body of works are put together, and which enhances every single one of them, I, I would say. And this is why we think that it's really that it was really worthwhile doing this. One of the issues that uh, kind of emerged uh, as we were preparing this show uh, is that uh, we were looking at the portraiture from the point of view uh, of a body of work that we did uh, in the 2000s um, that we called cognitive exercises. And cognitive exercises uh, were setups for performance that uh, um, we would put uh, a few objects uh, in a well-defined environment and we invited the viewers either uh, alone or in a group to, uh, to perform a certain set of actions uh, in that setup. Um, so for 10 years we were doing this type of work um, and now it was uh, one of the first time that after doing these cognitive exercises for 10 years we looked back at our portraits um, and uh, what we found out is that uh, this new perspective that we had, uh, this new body of work, actually shone a new type of light on some of the earlier portraits. That's why the show is called uh, uh, Portraits uh, and Other Cognitive Exercise in 2001 to 2012, because um, the 2001 was the birth for us of these cognitive exercises. Uh, the portraits came a lot before. So what we learn about portraits um, is that some of them um, function as a set of instructions uh, or as a kind of a part of a performance. Uh, this is a fairly good example um, and this young guy that we call the cripple is holding um, the piece of wood like that. Uh, the, it seems as if it's like signaling to us uh, to do something, uh, or he's asking us to look at his uh, movement, as his action, um, as uh, something like a cognitive exercise um, and uh, the way you see it is in the place of the object in the piece and that all of a sudden um, the specific action becomes thematized. So when we look back at this type of portraits we start to look at them a little bit differently uh, in light of the later work uh, in a way that really connects them much more to sculpture and to performance uh, in particular. This is a setup. Uh, the musical instruments of the quartet, uh, but the players are instructed to play while they are chained to each other with these constraints. So as long as they are playing in the same direction, uh, the piece of music doesn't change. But when one of them is playing slowly and the other one is playing fast, then the one playing fast kind of drags the slow one uh, towards him and then the music changes. So, so that's uh, a, an example of uh, cognitive exercise. Now, here's a portrait of uh, Kippenberger that we did a lot earlier. So in light of this type of work, all of a sudden the fact that uh, 
his gesture all of a sudden takes on a different type of meaning. It looks like he's inviting or he's uh, uh, using some kind of a strange rhetoric uh, to signal some uh, unclear intentions. But at any rate, all of a sudden, when we look at uh, this portrait, uh, we could see the element of performance and even sculpture.